The big news taking over the NFL today is Devontae Adams getting traded from the Las Vegas Raiders to reunite with his pal and best friend Aaron Rodgers and the Big Apple with the New York Jets. Currently, the Jets are 2-4. and four. They just lost the Buffalo Bills on Monday Night Football, and it looks like their season is starting to trend in the wrong direction, and making this trade is pretty much their last-ditch effort to go all in on making sure that this Aaron Rodgers marriage ends up successfully, or it pans out successfully, because this Devontae Adams trade Kind of is like if the Los Angeles Lakers were to trade for Kyrie Irving. You know, Kyrie LeBron had a lot of success when they were playing with each other in Cleveland. They won the championship together. And a lot of Lakers fans been dying for Kyrie to reunite with LeBron. Well, this Devontae Adams trade is really similar in terms of you got two players who have a great connection with each other when they were playing together in Green Bay they were phenomenal had a lot of success down there playing in Lambeau Field but it's been a while since we last saw these two teams or these two players partner up and Aaron Rodgers isn't the same quarterback now that he used to be with the Green Bay Packers and that's why making this move for Devontae Adams makes so much sense how much how much help does Aaron Rodgers need? Uh, all the help he can get, man. He pretty much is running the New York Jets right now. They fired their head coach. You got an interim taking over. The defense kind of has started to decline with the coaching move that they made. So it pretty much is Aaron Rodgers a bust for the New York Jets. And you got to mortgage everything that you have to make sure that this season ends successfully. And by getting Devontae Adams, I think that it's pretty much guaranteed that the Jets are going to be a playoff team. I don't see how this move does result in them having a winning season. They have five teams coming up on their schedule that have bad offensive situations. The Steelers are making the quarterback change from Justin Fields to Russell Wilson. They struggled to put points up on the board all season. The Patriots haven't been good. The Cardinals offense has struggled. The Colts quarterback play is really inconsistent with Anthony Richardson now taking back over the mantle. And we know how he's been up and down this year. And the Jaguars, it looks like Doug Peterson is about to get fired down there. And by the time the Jets played the Jaguars, they probably would have already fired Peterson by that point. So all five of those games are winnable for the Jets. And if you win those five, you get the seven wins. Now, the next question is, how are you going to fare against some of the best competition on your schedule this year? Because your toughest games from this point out are against the Texans, the Seahawks. You got to play the Dolphins twice. Tua could be back by that point. And you got the Rams who are going to be fully healthy late in the season. And you got a Buffalo Bills team that you already lost to. But if you would have made those two field goals and you didn't have all of the stupid penalties that were called in that game against you. You probably could have walked out of that game with the win. So, obviously, Aaron Rodgers, if he's playing well, it doesn't really matter who the head coach is. Rather, if you had Jeff Albrick or Robert Sala, the success of this team is 90% dependent upon Aaron Rodgers' play. And Aaron Rodgers, he's had a few stinkers this year. He didn't look good against the Broncos. He didn't really look all that good against the 49ers in week one. And against the Vikings, he threw three interceptions in that game. But he's had moments where we've seen vintage Aaron Rodgers against the Bills. Monday night, the dude threw a Hail Mary before a halftime to make it a 2017 game to do the best Hail Mary Thor in the history of the NFL. I've never seen a quarterback have so much success with that play that's heavily dependent upon luck. And for Aaron Rodgers to make it look so effortlessly, 
is really phenomenal and it shows you that yeah he's a little bit old he isn't the player that he used to be but he still is good enough for the Jets to be a playoff team you don't need Aaron Rodgers to be a top five quarterback top 10 quarterback in the league you just need this dude to be able to execute and run this offense at a high level by bringing in Devontae Adams now you got one of the best receiving cores in the NFL we know how good Garrett Wilson is he kind of has been struggling at the primary number one receiver in that offense now you bring in Devontae Adams who are you going to focus your attention on if you're opposing defensive coordinator when you play the Jets now you can't double team Devontae Adams because then Garrett Wilson is going to be open and if you double team Garrett Wilson Devontae is going to be open and then Let's also not forget about Alan Lazard. Alan Lazard, this dude is only good when Aaron Rodgers is on the field. When Aaron Rodgers isn't playing, Alan Lazard is pretty much irrelevant. But you have three really good options at wide receiver now. And the run game shows signs of life against the Buffalo Bills. The offensive line isn't as big as a concern as what you may think. All right, we know that their offensive line situation is not really good. Aaron Rodgers is getting hit left and right. He's getting his back damn near broken in half in nearly every game. The Jets play against a halfway good defense. But you can still put up 28 points and walk away with a lot of wins this season, even if your offensive line gives up three, four sacks. The question is, can Aaron Rodgers stay healthy? That would be my big concern because if Aaron Rodgers can take these big hits and continue to get up, the Jets are going to be fine. The ceiling for the Jets now with the addition of Devontae Adams, to me, is the second round of the playoffs. I can't see this team going any further than that because to be a Super Bowl contender, you got to be a well-coached team. And the New York Jets are far from that. They had several penalties. Some of those were self-inflicted with some of the unsportsmanlike calls they had you miss two crucial field goals when you have a game that you lose in that fashion you gotta point the finger at the coaching and you can't sell me on the idea that Jeff Ulbrich an interim head coach is going to be able to lead the Jets to the conference championship we've seen numerous times that you don't need great coaching to win in the regular season but once you get into the different season that is playoff time not only do you need a good team but you also need to be a well coached team as well because you're going up against other teams that have just as good as a team or better than what you have from a talent standpoint, plus they're better coached. And Jeff Albrick, with how the defense looked against the Buffalo Bills Monday night, it's fair to say that firing Robert Sala made that side of the football worse, although Albrick was the dude who was responsible for the play calling. It's one thing to just only have to worry about calling plays, but once you factor in what comes with being a head coach, managing the rest of the team, having to decide when to go for it, accounting for situational football, it makes your responsibility for calling the plays a lot more difficult. This is Aaron Rodgers' team now. There's no question who's pulling the strings in this thing. This is like LeBron James with the Lakers. We all know that LeBron James isn't just the player and the coach, but he also is the general manager for that franchise as well. And Aaron Rodgers has used his power. He's used his leverage in his organization to create the team that he wanted. All right? So now he has to hold up his end of the bargain, and he has to play at least at the top 13 level, which I definitely think is probable to happen. The Jets are not as big as a dumpster fire as what the media is making them out to be, okay? I don't really think it matters if you keep Robert Sala or not. This team is still going to go as far as what Aaron Rodgers is able to carry them on his old 40-year-old back. Even if you did have Robert Sala and you make this move and you get to the playoffs, you still were never going to go anywhere further than the second round. Only good coach teams can make it to the conference championship game. You don't need a great quarterback to make it to a conference championship, but you do need to have great coaching. 
And with the Jets not really being all that well buttoned up, there's a ceiling to this team, even with this trade. This isn't going to be the Cinderella story that some folks are hoping that Aaron Rodgers can not only go out on top, but help resurrect the franchise that has struggled for a decade and some change. The best you're going to get this year out of this year's iteration of the New York Jets is a second round playoff exit at best. Making it to the conference championship will be a huge overachievement if the Jets can pull it off because the AFC is loaded right now. The Ravens are a better team. The Chiefs are still looking to three-peat. And even though they got some injuries, you can never count them out. The Houston Texans are going to be a really good team. I can't see the New York Jets being able to beat either of those teams if they have to face them in the postseason. But with getting Devontae Adams now, at least you guarantee that this season for the New York Jets is not going to end in a complete disaster. All right. They got five teams on this schedule that don't have good offenses that won't be able to take advantage of how this defense has declined with the firing of Robert Sala. And when you play some of the other good teams on your schedule that do have good offenses, you should still be able to at least win two or three of those games and have a 9-10 win season. You're not going to win this division. Because the Buffalo Bills are the best team in the AFC East this year. I think that is pretty clear and obvious of that. Hey, man, have you hit that like button yet? Have you subscribed to the channel? Because if not, what are you doing? Only takes less than a second to do so, man. I love football. You love football. This is the best place to be if you are a diehard fan of football, man. We're talking NFL, college football, 24-7, 365 days a year. If you are a diehard football fan, this is the right place for you. Smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell icon so you don't miss when we drop new content and go live.